Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Buyer News. My name is Juri Huang and I will be delivering some of Korea's hottest spy and tech issues today for you. A DNA vaccine candidate material developed by a Korean biotech company has been injected into a primate for the first time. After checking for stability, clinical trials on humans are expected to begin in June this year. South Korean biotech companies Genexine and Genome Bio said on March 25th that they have injected their own DNA vaccine GX19 into primate monkeys. Genexine previously formed a consortium with the International Vaccine Institute and Genome Bio by next Kaist Postac to develop DNA vaccine GX19. Leading the primate experience is Xenobiotic Organ Transplant Company Genome Bio. Genome Bio is a company that researches and develops the entire process of developing transgenic animals, transplantation techniques, and new medicines for transplantation. Genexine says it has already extracted candidates GX19 vaccine materials and secured samples to inject them into animals. And the primate test is to check whether the GX19 is safe and will conduct human clinical trials in June. GX19 under development by Genexine and Genome Bio is a candidate for a DNA vaccine against COVID-19. Unlike conventional vaccines that generally inject the body with a virus that has weakened its toxicity, DNA vaccines act by injecting the human body with a gene that can produce viral antigens. For example, the human body is injected with DNA that is recombined to produce proteins on the surface of the coronavirus. It's a way of reassembling genes and developing them faster than traditional vaccines. When you inject these DNA vaccines, the human body is concepted that the virus is coming in and it's immune to it, creating antibodies. With the spread of COVID-19 continuing, attention is being paid to whether or not Korean buyer companies, which were leading the way in developing diagnostic kits, will be able to stay ahead in developing treatments and vaccines. Bridge Biotherapeutics, one of the very first Korean bio company with an NRDO business model in Korea's bio industry, it is looking to make a business change by examining its own discovery of new drug candidates. It seems that the existing business model alone has limitations in growing into a global company. CEO of Bridge Bio Lee jung -gyu announced the progress of the project of the future business plans at the briefing on YouTube on March 23rd. At the meeting, he said that Bridge Bio started off as an NRDO, but wants to actively introduce new drug candidate materials through various methods, even through their own development. Their long-term vision is to grow into a company that can develop new drugs independently. NRDO is a business model that generates profits through technology export after rapid development of early clinical trials by introducing new drug candidate materials from outside. Bridge Bio was established in September 2015 under the NRDO project. In particular, it successfully exported 1.5 trillion one worth of technology to Beringer Ingelheim in July 2019 by introducing new drug candidate materials from Lego Chem Bio in 2017. However, the NRDO method is heavily dependent on the external market and there are already more and more competitors in Korea who claim NRDO business methods. On this, E expressed that Bridge Bio is expanding its search to overseas artificial intelligence fields in order to stay competitive in the business. Bridge Bio is already seeking to expand its business step by step. That's part of the agreement with Atomwise, an AI based new drug developer that was signed on March 10th. Collaborative research is a mid level between NRDO and independent development by nature. The self evolving project for new drug candidate material is still under review. Bridge Bio expects that the joint study will expend up to 13 targeted proteins, making a stable way to supply new drug candidate materials. The major achievements that Bridge Bio has proposed within 12 months are the launch of clinical trials for the second phase of BBT 877 treatment for lung fibrosis in more than 10 countries within the third quarter of this year. The achievement of out licensing and approval of the clinical trials for major pipelines. In particular, when the second phase of BBT 877 is launched, Bridge Bio said 
It expects to receive milestones from Berenger Ingelheim, and that is considering an ulcerative colitis candidate, BBT-401, and next-generation lung cancer drug, BBT-176. Celtrion Ha Jung Jin has said he will propose a merger plan for the three Celtrions sometime in the third quarter. This is first time since the last JP Morgan Healthcare conference that they have announced the timing of the proposed merger. Saul, who is about to retire presenting the schedule of the proposed merger, appears to be intended to reassure investors along with their commitment to all the pharmaceutical companies. Because of his influence in the market, investors are worried about Saul's post-retirement risk this year. Chairman Saul made the remarks by telephone at the regular shareholders meeting in Songdo Convention in Chan on March 27th. At the meeting, he announced that at the end of the third quarter, a legal review of the merger will be completed and presented to shareholders, and finds the tri-merger significant as Celtrion will finally become a comprehensive pharmaceutical company. With the merger of three Celtrion group companies, the combined market capitalization is estimated at 32 trillion won. Samsung Biologics as well as Naver and Hyundai Motors could rank fourth in terms of total time value of securities. Sa says his retirement policy remains unchanged. He has been referring to his retirement for the last five years and has said he will retire at 65, the same retirement age as the company's executives. The chairman expressed confidence at the shareholders' meeting that Celtrion sales will increase more than 100 percent in year 2020 from the previous year. He explains that since it is difficult to access medical institutions with COVID-19, patients are always prescribed Ramsama SC, which is available for self-injection at home. Truxima and Herzima are also being prescribed because they need to be treated with anti-cancer drugs. And according to Saul, there are no problems with sales in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. In addition, regarding the pace of development of the COVID-19 treatment that Celtrion is developing, the company said it will complete the production of the prototype in late April and clinical trials by the end of May to enter the clinical stage of the COVID-19 treatment human body starting in the second week of July. The treatment that Celtrion is developing is an antibody treatment that is made through the blood of patients recovering from COVID-19. Celtrion said on February 27th that it has obtained the patient's blood. Well, that's it for today's briefing on Korea's hottest biotech industry. Thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you on our very next episode. Have a great day ahead.